Hello guys, S2W here. Today's video is not about a sneaker review, but more of a vlog style approach to my first campout experience for shoes. So today, May 27th of 2017, both Jordan brand and Adidas were dropping heat sneakers. Adidas was dropping the Adidas Consortium EQT 9317 by Overkill, while Jordan brand is finally reopening its Jordan store in Toronto after it was taken down for renovation since the 2016 All-Star Game. When you know it's opening day, chances of certain shoe restocking will be high so I had to pick one brand to line up for because the two lineups are located at different places and time frame and thus different planning will be needed. In the end, I chose to go for the Jordan brand because I wanted my first pair of ones. Let it either be breads, black toes, or royals. I just wanted one of them because I've always had bad luck with Jordan every time there were raffles here. So why not, quote unquote, let me control my fate. But controlling it is hard dedication. The Jordan store opened at the same spot that it opened a year ago during the NBA All-Star Game, which was a few stores away from Young and Dundas Street, which I consider as the heart of Toronto. Jordan announced on their Instagram that they will open on Saturday, May 27th of 2017, which is today's video upload date, at 6.23am in the morning, 6 representing Toronto and 23 representing Jordan's number. Online, I've heard people were already taking shifts lining up since the Wednesday. Now that's some next level dedication. By 6pm, I heard there were about 80 people in line lining up, but what I did was reaching around 9pm on the Friday night before its morning opening. That's still a 9 hour camp till 6.23 am. When I got there at 9 pm, the line obviously got longer since I last checked at 6 pm. I was about 160 to 200 in line and at that point, a lot of rumors were coming in and out saying what's available and how many stock there was. Some were saying there was only 20 pairs of bread ones, others say 400 royals, then 500 to 800 royal ones. What I've learned after the whole ordeal is that if you've already committed, don't fail. I was prepared to face a 9 hour lineup. Now the lineup didn't go as bad as I thought, there were essentially two lines, one small line about 30 to 40 people outside the Jordan store on the sidewalk and then the rest inside the atrium beside the Jordan store indoors. Wristbands were given out to people who lined up really early I heard so people can go in and out of the line I guess. They eventually ran out and were never given to the people near me. Anyways, they had a strict policy indoors where we cannot sit on lawn chairs or any chairs at all that some people brought with them. We had to sit on the floor, maybe it was the building's rule, I don't know why. I kept checking the time and in between, people were just chilling with their friends, on their phone, fidget spinners, and listening to music. I made sure to say hi to the people in front and back of me so just in case that I would leave the line for a washroom break, they would get my back and vice versa. I brought my bag with me with water and snacks and most importantly, a portable phone charger. That saved me from boredom as I was a one man band tonight. One thing I have seen is that people do sell their spots in front for people in the back, which is the first time I've seen it happen in person. Also, cutting in line. This is a horrible one. If you lined up for the majority of the night and then suddenly the last one or two hours you bring a group of people in, prepare to get flamed on by tired and grumpy people because even if you don't chat with the people near you, they will remember your face. Line cutting is the worst, so shout out to the dude that was behind me for catching a group up front. Experience wise for this particular camp out, the atrium was hot as hell and like a baking oven with sweat and carbon dioxide. Essentially, the line grew and grew and by the time it was around 4am, the security had to stand up and cram together because they didn't have enough room for people coming in and they didn't want the lineup to extend to other shops down the atrium. At 4am, we were forced to stand and for some odd reason, they didn't allow us to sit at all. I don't really mind because I've sat for way too long, but because they want to conserve space, the place got extra dense, cramped, and humid. By 5am, there was at least 500 people inside the atrium. Anyway, it took an extra hour and a half probably to get in after it opened. I was so happy to reach the door because there was ventilation there. I could finally see light, literally. Now for the big moment, I went inside and was immediately greeted by a shopping assistant. I'm terribly sorry but I totally forgot his name. This dude was very helpful and a nice guy who went to look for sizes that I wanted and also grabbed the closest size that I called out for. The place had a great atmosphere with the DJ rocking his stuff at the center. Now I'm not the most knowledgeable in Jordans but this is what they had on their first opening day by the time I walked in. As you can see, my eyes quickly stared at the OVO 12 and 10s. Then the bread ones and black toes. But unfortunately for these two colorways, it was too late for me because they don't have the size that I need.
and I also really liked the new Love Jordan 1 mid, but it wasn't something immediately that I wanted to get. In love with the colorway though, even in person. Today, there wasn't a lot of Jordan 6 strangely enough. The one that popped to me was the Pinnacle 6s. I would assume that the next few days or weeks, the store will have a surprise drop with more 6s because I heard they wanted to gear towards the 416 theme, the area code of Toronto. So a lot of 1s reached off today. 4s were alright, we had a wheat and also royalty 4s where I think looked great if only I had a bit more money to spend. They also had the Baron 11 lows here as well, which released worldwide today. They also had a display case that showcased all the OG colorways of the Jordan line. That was pretty unique to see. Then you have some graphic tees, one of which I really like because it displays Jordan 4, 1, and 6s in that order. Again, the area code for Toronto. They also had the Chinese New Year 12s here opening day, and the Pure Money 4s that's available from many foot stores as well. I didn't get much chance to film because by the time I was in there, I was really sleepy. But there was an entire back bench area that allows us to customize our own Jordan 1s with laser sketches. This was the first floor, while the top floor is a VIP athletic gym from what I recall. And then a basement area where they sell youth sizes sneakers and apparel. I might visit the store again this coming week without feeling all tired and drained. The Jordan store was really well executed and the place overall looked really nice. There were some art pieces that was there as well that I forgot to film, but overall, it was a memorable experience. One of the greatest feeling ever when you walk out the door with your purchases and finally realize your bed at home is waiting for you. Regardless, be smart and stay safe guys. Will I do it again? Only if I really 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 wanted a sneaker, cause the 9 hour wait was tiring as hell. That's it for today, S2W signing off.